With five races remaining, Max Verstappen's Red Bull team has won all but one Grand Prix this season, winning 14 himself, and they've already captured both the Drivers' and Constructors' Championship. The magnitude of their grip on F1 looks to have resulted in a reduction in fan interest, as a recent research by Buzz Radar revealed a significant drop in social media interaction. This has prompted fans and even drivers to ask for changes in the regulations to level the playing field. But would this be fair? And could F1 really do something like this? The FIA were quick to react on some of the rumors and stated that even if one team dominance is a turnoff for spectators, FIA President Mohamed Ben Salem believes it would be inappropriate to punish Red Bull for their success in Formula 1. So, no changes, right? Well, maybe. As we all know, the FIA might surprise us sometimes, so no changes will never be the real case as we've seen last year with multiple technical directives. But how have we even come to this point? Could a falling fanbase really push the FIA into making changes? How bad could it be? Well, according to its research, social media mentions of Formula 1 were down 70.2% in the first five months of this year when compared to the same time in 2022, with new followers down 46.29% and social reach down 64.1%. For the last three years, the numbers from January to May are as follows. Mentions was 3.19 million, then 6.14 million, and now 1.83 million. For new followers, it was 624.27 thousand in 2021, then 911.15 thousand in 2022, and then 489.37 thousand. And the social reach? 35.63 billion in 2021, then 61.73 billion in 2022, and then 22.16 billion in 2023. In the report, Buzz Radar concluded, the data comparison between 2022 and 2023 revealed significant drops in the overall mentions of F1, along with dismal numbers in the growth of new followers of high-profile accounts. The reach of F1-related content across various social platforms has also receded, in stark contrast to the steady progress observed yearly before. But the declining numbers are only one part of the story. The social data for 2023 also offered insight into a fundamental shift in conversation about F1, a noticeable upswing in the use of negative adjectives associated with sport. Words like boring and annoying are now becoming high-frequency descriptors, replacing erstwhile positive words like interesting and exciting. According to the analysis, the explanation of such a drop-off is simply single-team dominance, with Red Bull winning all but two races in the previous year. I think that there is a clear link between the tightness of an F1 title race and how much it entices viewers to get involved, since F1 had such a drop-off in 2018 when Lewis Hamilton surged to victory. 2016 was the most talked-about season until 2021, despite all the contributory factors of the Liberty takeover, Drive to Survive and Lockdown because Nico Rosberg and Hamilton were battling closely, according to the report. The season was decided by only five points. Conversations stagnated between 2018 and 2020, while Hamilton dominated, and grew significantly again during the 2021 season, the closest championship since 2016. Both 2016 and 2021 seasons were decided at the last race. 2022 continued to ride the wave of the close competition for at least a while, but now we're seeing the results of one driver dominance once again. 2023 is now on course to continue losing conversation, and this pattern will continue until the racing becomes closer again. While the social media numbers for 2023 are far from ideal, the Buzz Radar analysis acknowledges that F1 has been quite remarkable in terms of viewership growth over the last decade. But the lack of enthusiasm around the 2023 season has caused some to urge the F1's executives get in and try to level things up at the front to make it more of a spectacle next year. While Ben Salem is open to any concept that can increase excitement while being fair to all competitors, he adds the FIA will not accept anything that is targeted at purposefully slowing down a team merely because it is performing well. It, speaking of domination, has happened so many times. Just look at Lewis Hamilton and Michael Schumacher. Ben Salem remarked when asked whether Red Bull's lockout of success was a turnoff. How to stop? It's a bit harsh and not right to go and punish success. I mean, I'm open for suggestions if you think that there's a way to be fair and to be democratic, and not to just punish Max and his team or any other team. We're all ears here, really. But I'm stuck like you. There's no way that the FIA will punish success, and it, one driver dominance, has happened before twice in my time. While the FIA will not interfere with the spectacle in any way, 
it is looking into measures to enhance overtaking for 2025. And before those rules will come into effect, we'll surely see some changes for the upcoming season, as we did last season and this season with multiple technical directives. This is all because the new 2022 ground effect standards were intended to let cars follow each other more easily, but their efficacy has deteriorated since their implementation. Thus, new rules needed to be implemented, otherwise the competition would be too far away from each other again. The FIA's director of single-seater issues, Nicholas Tombazes, recently stated that team efforts to boost performance had a detrimental influence on raceability, which is why car adjustments are being considered. If we take the 2021 F1 cars, based on being two lengths from the car in front, they were losing more than 50% of the aero load, he went on to say. With the 2022 single-seaters, there was only a 20% reduction in load, but now we're at about 35%. Surely there's been a worsening. One of the factors that has contributed to this decrease in efficacy is that teams have improved their understanding of the return of outwash characteristics, which diverts disturbed airflow away from the cars to assist with reducing drag. While this is helpful for individual performance, it makes it more difficult for other cars to follow closely. Ben Salem was aware that the teams were pushing in directions that compelled the FIA to respond, but he did not consider this to be a negative thing. They're getting smarter, but we have to be smarter than them, he added. It is a good thing they are because they're making the level higher for us. Honestly, if they didn't, we'll be sitting there like stuck on E5 fuel when it comes to emissions. We would become lazy and we would become not creative, and there would be no challenge. But the question will be if it will become more challenging for every team or just the top teams so they can try and slow them down. Only time will tell. Another rule that has already seen changes is the investment cap, and it's changed in a way to hurt the top teams and help the little ones. This rule change seems the financial restrictions raise the investment cap based on world championship rank. This pleases some teams but irritates others. Williams and Sauber have been battling for this for the past six months. The British racing team competed in public, while the Swiss squad competed behind closed doors. Both racing teams requested a capital expenditure extension from the FIA in order to invest more money in modernizing and aging infrastructure. The FIA issued a proposal to all members of the Formula One Commission on September 28, 2023, which was finally adopted by a small majority. From 2021 until the end of 2023, everyone's investment volume was increased from 36 to 45 million US dollars. The 9 million difference is due to inflation. There is additional money for everyone for the four-year period from 2021 to the end of 2024 based on their championship place. Alpha Tauri, Williams, Alpha Sauber, and Haas are permitted to invest 65 million US dollars instead of 45 million in wind tunnels, simulators, test benches, manufacturing machinery, or software. It is 58 million for McLaren, Alpine, and Aston Martin, but only 51 million for Ferrari, Mercedes, and Red Bull. This equates to a surcharge of 7, 14, and 20 million US dollars. Not everyone is pleased with the increased freedom. Ferrari team boss Frederic Vasseur warns of the consequences. We've opened the door a few times now to adjust the cost cap rules. I think this is dangerous. We should remember 2019 when some teams were in financial trouble. Just because we're all better off now, we shouldn't be tempted to go back to the way things were. Williams team principal James Vowell countered, This adjustment was necessary to create fair competition. Williams has more catching up to do in terms of infrastructure than other teams. The backlog was created at a time when this team had no money to upgrade. If we are now benefiting a bit more than other teams from CapEx expansion, it has to do with the fact that our starting point in the factory is worse. It's only fair. The updated budget should make Alpha Tauri delighted, but the new managing director, Peter Bayer, is suspicious, partly because he was engaged in the formulation of the financial restrictions in his previous capacity as FIA Secretary General. The idea was to limit all teams to a limit that everyone can afford. In the case of capital investment, it's nice that we're allowed to spend more money now, but you have to have the money first. The Austrian criticizes Alpha Tauri for developing a business strategy based on outdated statistics six months ago, and now facing greater constraints. Now I have to find a new sponsor or go to the owners and ask for more money. And that's not as fun as it sounds. Red Bull had previously determined at the start of the year on an austerity plan for the sister team, as well as a deeper link through the usage of greater synergies with the big brother, which could lessen the need for some updated systems. What are your thoughts on all the rule changes? Is it only right to let others spend more to keep up with the newest technology? And what about a possible rule change to take down Red Bull's dominance? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And whilst you're down there, who do you think will win the Grand Prix this weekend?